Each September, 4,000 children and their parents from all across San Francisco get ready for their first day of kindergarten. They eagerly pack their bags and plan out their schedules, excited for what's to come. But for almost 1,000 children and their parents, that day isn't what they always dreamed of. All students who live within the boundaries of SFUSD, the San Francisco Unified School District, participate in the district matching system to find out what elementary school they'll be attending in the upcoming year. While SFUSD does its best to match students with a school on their lists, it doesn't always work out in the child's favor. San Francisco father, Dale Hill, approached the lottery armed with information. Dale estimates that he and his wife spent 50 hours touring schools, talking to other parents, attending school fairs, and comparing school statistics, all in the name of giving their daughter Sheila an excellent education. In the end, he listed eight schools for his daughter that he would love for her to attend. But all that effort didn't prepare him for the result. Dale was shocked that he didn't get any of the eight schools he included on his list, but he gamely considered the school assignment he was randomly given. I didn't know anything about the school, so I looked up the information, Dale said. Dale soon learned that he was assigned to the third lowest performing school in the city. Then, he just went into panic mode. Two weeks and several deep breaths later, Dale and his wife are reviewing their options. They are looking at a parochial school, and like many parents before them, they are considering moving to a place with higher performing schools. That means accepting the high cost of moving and longer work commutes. But Dale and his wife are ready to move mountains in order to help their daughter get into a high-performing school. Many others are not so fortunate. Low-income families can't afford to look at private schools or move to a different house. Their only option is to hold out hope that the SFUSD matching system will somehow come through for them. So, how exactly does the system work, and can families actually gain the system to increase their chances of success? The SFUSD matching system was founded in response to desegregation of the United States following the Civil Rights Movement. In 1978, the NAACP brought a suit against the SFUSD, claiming that the SFUSD has a legal responsibility to address de facto segregation. They reached a settlement in 1983, which stipulated that a new school choice system would be established. The system would operate under the following goals. Each school should have no fewer than four racial groups represented, and no single racial group should make up more than 45% of a school student body. In response to these demands, the SFUSD created an assignment system which automatically places everyone in their neighborhood school. Students could submit three to five choices if they were unhappy with the assignment, and those choices would be fulfilled in a way that helps the district meet its desegregation goals. Perhaps not surprisingly, the system was fairly unsuccessful, as housing patterns show significant and persistent segregation for certain races and income groups. In 2001, the U.S. District Court prohibited the SFUSD from using race explicitly in its assignment process. Yet desegregation was still a major goal of the matching system. SFUSD instead attempted to use various indicators as a proxy for race, such as socioeconomic status, home language, and the academic performance index of their current school. But ultimately this led to a variety of problems as the system was not strategy proof. The Yoshida family spoke both English and Japanese at home and hoped to enroll their son Nick in a Japanese immersion program so that he could continue practicing both languages at school. Nick's parents thought that indicating Japanese as a home language on their matching form may decrease his chances of getting into the school. They felt that the matching system attempted to create well-rounded classes which would disadvantage already Japanese-speaking students seeking to enter the Japanese program. It's hard to tell if the Yoshida family's strategy was successful or not, as the enrollment guide suggests that there is no ideal profile of a student. Nevertheless, parents across the district subscribed to this philosophy and attempted to manipulate the results of the matching program by changing their child's profile. In 2010, in an effort to increase transparency and improve the outcomes realized, the SFUSD once again adopted a new algorithm. In part based on the original goals of the matching algorithm, it also came in response to a push for strategic simplicity. The algorithm begins by assigning each student with the lottery number. Students rank the schools in the order in which they truly like them. They encourage to only rank the schools that they would actually attend and leave the remainder of schools off their list. 
Then the algorithm determines the preference level, if any, that each student has for a particular seat. The highest preference is given to students who attend the associated preschool or have an older sibling at that school. Preference is then given to students who live in low-income areas, and lastly it's given to students who live in the same attendance area as the school they are attempting to match with. The students' rankings and these preferences are then translated into an assignment via the algorithm. The process temporarily gives students seats at schools for which they have a high preference, and then looks for ways to swap students such that all students involved in the transfer are better off. For every seat that hasn't yet been permanently assigned, the algorithm repeats until no more students can be assigned. Every unassigned student is then randomly assigned to an available seat. If parents and students are unlucky, they can try again in the next round of the matching process. Ultimately, spots do open up as families move or decide to attend private school, but it's difficult to match with the best schools in later rounds of the process. The latest iteration of the algorithm comes to a stable matching, which is also Pareto optimal. We prove this in further detail in our paper. Additionally, it's extremely difficult to game the system, although we believe that it's not quite strategy-proof. Darlene Lim, the executive director of SFUSD's Educational Placement Center, maintains that strategizing is impossible. The transfer mechanism is dependent on what other students have as a tentative assignment going into the transfer process, and there can be no way of knowing or strategizing in order to maximize their chances of a swap. To understand what, if any, strategies are successful, we built a simulation of the SFUSD matching system. We then tested out various strategies that parents have soared by to get a sense of how effective they actually are. The most popular strategy we discovered through anecdotal evidence is to rank your attendance area school higher on your list of choices than your true preference for it. We tested it out in our simulation and failed to see any overall improvements. Since receiving an offer to a school doesn't depend on ranking, Moving the attendance area school higher on your preference list doesn't improve the chance of swapping to a more desirable school. For Dale Hill, this news isn't comforting. But using our simulation, we discovered that there is a way to increase his chances for success in a second attempt at the matching process. Had Dale ranked more schools, there is a greater chance he would have received a school higher up on his list. In other words, Dale should have ranked his top 8 schools as he did, but not stop there. He should have continued to rank all schools, even if he didn't want to send his daughter to one of them. This increases his chance of swapping upwards to receive a choice that he would want. To demonstrate a scenario where ranking a greater subset would help the student, we show a toy example. In this toy example, there are four students and four schools, each with a capacity of one. Sheila will only attend an SFUSD school if she is assigned to Claire Lil Lilienthal. If Sheila submits her true preferences, she will only receive a tentative offer at Malcolm X, which she cannot trade with other students. If Sheila instead ranks every school, she will receive a tentative assignment at Clarendon, a school she can use to make a three-person trade with Jose and Anna, and she will receive an assignment at Claire Lilienthal, her top choice. Additionally, we speculated why the SFUSD might have settled on the current system after years of modifying it to better account for racial diversity and geographic proximity while trying to maximize satisfaction with the results for parents. To do this, we ran our simulation against modified systems and compared systems based on their final racial distribution. We changed the school's preference order to favor attendance area over low-income areas. As expected, the racial diversity of each school more closely resembled that of the attendance area rather than the desegregated ideal that SFUSD strives for. To truly achieve desegregation, it is likely that the SFUSD should invest resources in areas outside of improving the matching system. Our simulation has shown that the matching system is the most effective it has ever been. Yet, the current system doesn't educate parents with low income and education levels to realize that getting into a good school can help their child succeed, and it doesn't help those parents find the money and resources necessary to send their child to a good school across the city. To get at the heart of the problem, we need to provide better support for parents entering the matching journey and bring all schools to a common high standard. This will help ensure that children of all races and socioeconomic statuses will enjoy the benefits of the public school system for decades to come.